okay everything is in order let's get started now in today's video we're going to be talking about smartphone storage yeah so there are basically uh, three types of smartphone storage uh, on the Android side you've got eMMC and you've got UFS iPhones use neither of these two they actually use NVMe so which one is the best one and which one should you be looking out for if you're getting your next smartphone let's get started <music> Now, um, all smartphones basically use what is known as flash memory. That's the very important part. For you to understand how smartphone storage works, you need to know what flash memory is. Now, flash memory is a type of electronically programmable memory that uses electrical uh, logic circuits now to save data in ones and zeros. So basically, there are two types of flash memory. You've got the non-flash and you've got the non-flash. So non-flash is obviously is, it's more expensive, it's faster, but it doesn't hold a lot of you know, like data. But non-storage, on the other hand, is less expensive, although not as fast as no memory, but it can hold a lot more data and for much cheaper than no so basically everybody uses NAND flash right so i'll take this one more time flash memory is divided to two no and NAND no expensive fast doesn't hold a lot of data NAND cheaper slower but holds a lot more data so all smartphones both on the android and the ios side uses NAND flash i think that one is clear enough so Moving on, NAND flash needs to have its sort of controller or interface that would allow your host smartphone, CPU or SOC to interface with it, that's to access it, to get you know, uh, data in and out of the, the, the memory now, the NAND flash. So different companies have different methods of letting your smartphone access memory so this is where the eMMC the UFS and the NVMe comes in so I'm going to start with the first one eMMC now eMMC is the oldest like the oldest type of memory on offer here uh, now eMMC actually stands for embedded multimedia card so it's an embedded version of an MMC card. But when you say embedded, it means that it is soldered onto the motherboard and cannot really be removed by the end user. Less. In fact, it cannot be removed at all. You remove it and you need a new motherboard for your smartphone. It's that simple, it's embedded. So eMMC has been around for quite a while now. Now, whilst it is very cheap, it is also very slow. It is so slow that it has been abandoned. The last, the most current version of eMMC is eMMC 5.1, which was last updated in 2015. Right, so since eMMC is outdated, the newer smartphones, that are not entry level, that are the mid range like segment all the way up to flagships, use a newer type of like you know NAND flash with a better controller UFS storage. So UFS is much faster than the older EMMC, a lot faster. Um, they also have one huge advantage over eMMC. Now, eMMC uses what is called a half duplex storage, meaning that it can only send instructions one way. So if you give your eMMC an instruction to save data, for example, all other instructions are going to have to wait until that like instruction is completed. So if you say save and then copy to somewhere else, it's going to have to save first when it's done saving before it to copy that is one uh, shortcoming of emmc flash ufs 
on the other hand can while it's saving start copying what you want it to copy to another destination so for that uh since emms is a half duplex ufs is a full duplex meaning that you can send instructions both ways back and forth start start easy so what about the third one nvme now for those people who are very familiar with ssds and with laptops and computers notice that lots of you know like newer laptops and ssds tout nvme for very fast speeds so that could probably lead one to think that it is the same technology that is on apple's iphones whilst that is true to an extent it is not very it's not the same thing let's let's just put it out it's not the same thing now uh at some time around uh, 2010 2011 i hope i'm getting this date correctly apple bought an israeli company called anobit anobit i hope i'm pronouncing that right as well a-n-o-b-i-t now this company this israeli company made flash controllers right and in no time they were able okay now since apple owns the company now they were able to make low powered nvme controllers that custom made for apple that could be used on apple's iphones the very first phone that used the nvme controller was the iphone 6s and yes whilst the low powered nvme controllers were actually are not as fast as the ones for laptops and pcs they are or rather they were well ahead of any android smartphone as at the time and it gave them a huge boost because most of the time people would think that apple's processors are really good which they are yes but enough credit isn't given to how fast their storage is that you know helps the, the the cpus to be able to access data back and forth to be able to load and you know carry out its tasks the, f the flash storage is very very important but although the lead that apple's iphones had with the nvme over androids is starting to you know the, the gap is reducing yearly especially with the release of ufs 3.0 and i think ufs 4.0 uh even promises to further bridge that gap a whole lot so some of you may want to ask why is it that other android manufacturers ha have not invested into an nvme controller yet well it's going to cost them a lot of money and a lot of time which a lot of them do not have because they are always competing against each other at the very top so why would they spend time doing that and besides ufs is ufs has gotten better yearly so it's only a matter of time so it's either apple step up their low powered nvme controllers or ufs is going to catch up and overtake them but whatever it is ufs is basically a very good deal so these are the three types of um flash storage that you'll find on any smartphone the emmc the ufs and the nvme for apple so it's very important to know that if you see emmc uh, you know that that phone is low end entry level budget i don't think lower midrange just come with emmc anymore so it's slow it's can only carry out an instruction at a time and it's been largely forgotten but it's cheap so you find it on cheap phones ufs on the other hand is much much more newer can carry out two instructions at once but it's also a bit more expensive so you find it on a lot more expensive phones like ah PCN. okay so um you would find <laughs> you'd <laughs> you would find uh, emmc on older phones or on newer entry-level phones that's like lower end very uh, cheap and affordable phones 
are UFS, you'd find it on the mid rangers. Now, you all UFS are obviously not the same, so you need to know which UFS is in a particular phone. Could be UFS 2.1, could be 2.2, could be 3.0, could be 3.1. The higher, the better. And then Apple's iPhones uses uh, NVMe controllers, low powered NVMe controllers, but they never really give you any information about their controllers. Like those people, they've, they've got their information on lockdown. And that's for that. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.